The Kaioken, King Kai Fist, Fist of the World King, Emperor Fist, K.O. Ken, remember that one? Whenever I think of Dragon Ball Z, I always think of that blood redded aura Kaioken technique and how Goku used to tear his body apart to get the strength he needed to stand up to Vegeta or anyone else. I remember those times of Dragon Ball being so intense and stressful to watch because the Kaioken was a double-edged sword, an excellent implementation to Goku's overall arsenal of tools that brought tension and satisfaction when watching. Why is the Kaioken stronger than the Kaioken? What does that title even mean? Well, if you've been here for this series, you'll know exactly where we're going with this one. But I want to find out how many Kaioken warriors are in the house. Do you guys love this technique? What's your favorite moment with it? Kaioken attack that like button. You know these likes make the video even more formidable. Let's get the likes multiplied to a Kaioken times a thousand. You're legends for doing that. Thank you. But why is Kaioken stronger than Kaioken by concept? Do we take this broken multiplier, this broken power-up of Kaioken for granted? Because it's hard to fathom just what a two times increase at bare minimum could do in terms of raw power, what that actually means in Dragon Ball. You see, when you have domination multipliers, you have the low end and high end. You need to be roughly 1.25 times stronger than the opponent to start to overwhelm them, where 1.75 times is typically a complete domination unless you literally hand the opponent the win. But two times onwards, we're talking about the ability to absolutely decimate and tank attacks clean, unhurt, to the point 2.25 times to 2.5 times the opponent. You can negate, manipulate, and even absorb the opponent's attacks using just pure raw power. And that's exactly what Kaioken abides by. It's the enhancement to the user's raw power. Their capabilities in terms of everything, from punching power, lifting, running speed, hearing, everything is sharpened or heightened to that magnitude of a multiplier. It is scary, and if you think about it, it's goddamn broken that 10 times, hell, even a 4 times raw power boost seems unimaginable when thinking about it conceptually. Super Saiyan is meant to be 2 times a Super Saiyan 1 in the guidebooks, Super Saiyan 3 is meant to be 4 times Super Saiyan 2, but Kaioken, now nah, I'll stack a 20 times on this. It's a completely broken technique that gets even more ridiculous as time goes on when Goku can apply it to his stronger transformations. But my top 3 Kaioken moments in history are the 20 20 times Kaioken Kamehameha against Frieza, such a powerful moment when Goku uses it as he's on the ropes. And I also love the Kaioken combined with Super Saiyan Blue against Hit. That moment took me way back to classic Dragon Ball Z days, the power and up times, huge moment for Super. But I also love Goku's Kaioken power up in front of Ginyu. I'll never forget seeing that face in pure horror. But yeah, let me know what your top Kaioken moments are, guys. Let's look at the variations of Kaioken. You have the Kaioken attack. He uses it against Vegeta. It's basically Kaioken Goku in a berserk estate. You have the Kaioken finish, which is the rush attack used by Goku, and he catches them right at the end. We all remember this when he used it on Nappa. We have the Kaioken Kamehameha, which is a combination of the Kaioken and the Kamehameha, naturally. A super awesome way to amp Goku's Kamehameha. Then we have the Super Kaioken, the combination of the Kaioken and the Super Saiyan transformation. Such a dangerous state. Super Saiyan Blue Kaioken. You know what this one is, guys. 10 times Super Saiyan Blue Kaioken. The further enhanced version of the Super Saiyan Blue. You have a 10 times God Kamehameha, which is a more powerful version of the God Kamehameha. And then you go one step further beyond that to a times 20 Super Saiyan Blue Kaioken. It's the highest level Goku can use for Super Saiyan Blue. We also have Super Saiyan 4 Kaioken, a state achieved by Xeno Goku. Just saying Super Saiyan 4 Kaioken sounds like you're breaking something already. Crazy stuff. You also have Maximum Kaioken, which is used in Dragon Ball Fusions. But overall, the Kaioken can be combined with a lot of stuff in Dragon Ball, as long as you have the power, stamina, durability to be able to handle the sudden surge of power, the sudden multipliers added onto the power you're already trying to control. It's very dangerous. You're going outside the box of what your body should be able to do. Let's talk about the movie appearances of Kaioken. Here's a bit of fun information for you guys. I watched the Lord Slug movie the other night, and boy, what an awesome movie that is. Interestingly, Goku uses the Kaioken in that movie to defeat Lord Slug, and he follows it up with a mini Genki Dama. But do you know what's crazy? Is that earlier, during Goku and Slug's fight, Goku used the classic false Super Saiyan form to hold his own against Slug, and this followed up by Slug powering up even more, and the story tells us through the use of King Kai that Lord Slug is a Super Namekian, and that not even Frieza or a Super Saiyan can stand up to him. Now, bearing in mind, this is a Goku without Super Saiyan, and he uses his Kaioken to deal with Slug. So in this movie, is Kaioken stronger than Super Saiyan, or is King Kai an oaf? 
Still, it's very amusing how the writers chose for that dialogue to be authorized in the movie, yet Kaioken looked badass getting the job done. But word has it in the Weekly Shonen Jump of 91 stated that Kaioken was the Kaioken times 100, which could explain the higher than Super Saiyan multiplier in order to deal with Lord Slug. But then we also have to consider Goku's base power here, but either way, when we get rid of the headaches and continuities of comparing movies to the actual anime series, it's still fun to think that in that movie, the Kaioken did what King Kai thought a Super Saiyan or Frieza could not do. It's used in Dragon Ball Z The World's Strongest, Goku used it to free himself after being frozen, follows up with a Kaioken times 3 against Dr. Wheelow's giant robotic body, and follows up again with a Kaioken times 4 Kamehameha, similar to Goku vs Vegeta. It's used in the Tree of Might, Goku spams the Kaioken to defeat all of Turles' henchmen, it's also used in Dragon Ball Z Cooler's Revenge, where eventually the Super Saiyan form is the only way to deal with Cooler, rendering the Kaioken obsolete in that movie. The same happens in Return of Cooler, the Kaioken is used early on, but proves to be far too feeble against Cooler, so Super Saiyan is needed. This would be the last film where Goku utilizes the Kaioken to battle the main villain. We do see the Kaioken times 3 in a flashback in Battle of Gods, but yes, it's pretty easy to notice when exactly the Kaioken started being pushed to the side, and Super Saiyan took the position as the flagship power-up to sell more toys, and because it was just superior in every way to the Kaioken. Still, it doesn't devalue just how awesome the Kaioken is to watch in the show. Let's talk about why the Kaioken times 20 Kamehameha is deadlier than you think. Let me tell you why this, against Freezer, is way more powerful than you think, especially on paper when we consider scaling, multipliers, and all those numbers that we all love so much. Check this out. So Goku used the Kaioken times 20 Kamehameha on Freezer, and Freezer claimed it hurt him and stated that was close. This is the manga, by the way. Anyway, Goku and Piccolo thought it didn't shake Frieza, but it actually did. Frieza was shook by this power, trying to keep it to himself and maintain his composure, which is what got him angry. A Kamehameha would further amp the Kaioken times 20 power by 2.2 times. Therefore, a Kaioken times 20 Kamehameha could be considered relevant to the raw power of a theoretical Kaioken times 40, which is equal to 100% Frieza, but in one burst of energy, not passively. Meaning overall, 100% Freezer is still better than it, but if a Kaioken times 40 raw power was passive, not a double-edged sword, Goku could maintain it. Yes, it would be relevant in the fight without question due to multipliers and scaling and power levels at that time because they were important back then. A Kaioken times 20 Kamehameha being a short burst power equal to 100% Freezer is not a far stretch. This is why Freezer was worried about Goku's power. Anything equal or less than 50%, he would have just shrugged it off because he had 100% in his back pocket. The Kaioken was originally created by Akira Toriyama for Goku to have a new signature finisher in Dragon Ball apart from the Kamehameha. Where the Kamehameha was the biggest finisher in Dragon Ball, Akira Toriyama made the Kaioken to separate Dragon Ball from Z in terms of finishes earlier on. It was implied to be a finisher in some Dragon Ball Z movies and was a clear-cut finisher against Nappa and also Vegeta before the Great Ape form. For a long time in Goku's Dragon Ball journey, Goku had dismissed the Kaioken in the story. Now there are two main root reasons for this and we will discuss both. Firstly, the writer's decisions and focusing on new transformations, mainly the Super Saiyan forms, with the Kaioken technique being a relic of the past, and the show wanted to progress with new concepts. With that notion in mind, it's hard to stop the writer's writing, so that's basically it from behind the scenes. As demonstrated in the anime of Dragon Ball Z, we only saw the Kaioken once after Super Saiyan was introduced, and that was against Pycon in the filler episode. Even in the Dragon Ball Super Manga Chapter 39, it's never outright stated, but it's heavily implied that Goku used the Kaioken whilst in Super Saiyan Blue against Jiren, one time in the manga of Super, as far as I'm aware, but I think I may have to reread it. Let me know. Of course, in the anime of Dragon Ball Super, we get a few fun moments with the Kaioken against Hit, a brief moment against Samas, and also attempting to stabilize it for the Tournament of Power. Before Goku could transform into his various Super Saiyan forms, the Kaioken was always the means of amplifying Goku's power. Goku relied on the Kaioken in early Dragon Ball Z. However, Akira Toriyama initially planned for Goku to stop using the Kaioken after the battle with Frieza, because by that point, after Goku discovered Super Saiyan, it was just superior in all different ways. A bigger power increase, and didn't harm his body or rapidly drain his ki compared to the Kaioken in his base form. But according to Goku, mixing Super Saiyan and Kaioken can potentially be very lethal. This is because of the fundamental differences between the Super Saiyan and Kaioken. Kaioken requires to have a calm mind and a strong body. Super Saiyan is fueled by emotions and heightens one's senses, which is why years later in the Super Anime, Goku manages to mix the Kaioken and Super Saiyan God Blue after years of training. 
Even then, he was sick for a long time afterwards with delayed onset key disorder, which was heavily focused on in one episode on how the Kaioken times 10 on top of blue had messed up Goku's body. But the truth is, the Kaioken is almost like a double-edged sword in terms of writing and power scaling. It can actually be a very broken power amp when some fights are extremely close. Kaioken is such a dangerous move because it doesn't really have any limits. The move can theoretically enhance one's power as much as their body can withstand. To begin with, Goku could only multiply it by 3, 5, 10, but then managed to hit 20. However, with enough training, there's no telling how high it can go. But that takes us back to other transformations like Super Saiyan, which immediately close the gaps on Kaioken multipliers. With times 50 from base, times 100 for Super Saiyan 2, and 400 for Super Saiyan 3, it also gives the franchise more opportunities to sell more merchandise. Can you imagine selling two toys like this? Yeah, I want to be the one on the right. I think for the Dragon Ball Super anime purposes, having Goku with the Super Saiyan Blue Kaioken and Vegeta with his Super Saiyan Blue Evolved form, it puts them around the same level but giving them unique differences with their blue power. So it makes sense for the Kaioken to be brought back in the anime for purposes like that. But in a nutshell, Goku stopped using the Kaioken for so many years because his body just probably couldn't handle the amplified power on top of his Super Saiyan forms which he was already trying to master through the years anyway. By the time Dragon Ball Super came around, Goku had been training years and his mastery of Ki improved as well. Of course, it's still debatable even in the anime of Super if Goku has truly mastered the Kaioken. That's always a good one. What does the word mastered mean to us? We know he can use a 20 times multiplier on top of blue and doesn't suffer from the delayed onset key disorder anymore. But even though Goku doesn't suffer from that whilst doing a times 20, does it really mean he stabilized the times 20 blue for it to be on forever? Mastered is a term thrown around like the village bike. Mastered to me is like Goku leaving the time chamber as a Super Saiyan in perfect harmony during the Cell games. The Super Saiyan Blue Kaioken times 20 to me still seems like heavy duty on Goku in battle. And of course, it would be. Apart from Ultra Instinct, the Super Saiyan Blue Kaioken times 20 is Goku's all-out force. You can't master and stabilize your all-out force, because if you do master your all-out power, your maximum power, then your maximum is no longer your maximum. You can go even maximum -er. Super Saiyan, a transformation that is biological to a Saiyan anatomy and can naturally make a Saiyan reach new physiological and physical heights whilst transformed, with less consequences. With the notion of Goku's understanding of the Kaioken, he's definitely suppressed the negative effects of it in a times 20 on top of blue, and I believe that he has a really good control over it in Dragon Ball Super. But is the technique as a whole truly mastered? Mastered is indeed a term that has lost its meaning over the years and has been watered down over the years in Dragon Ball. Why hasn't Goku used a Kaioken times 40 or times 60 on top of blue? To me, mastered is like Goku and Gohan leaving the time chamber in perfect harmony as Super Saiyans. No side effects. That Super Saiyan form was mastered. First, we need to understand the side effects of Kaioken to find out what the problem is to overcome. In a nutshell, the Kaioken technique tears the user's body to shreds once the amplified key surge takes place. I said before that the Kaioken requires a calm mind to use, and some people actually laughed at that, associating the Kaioken with a calm mind, but let me tell you, for someone like Goku to amp his power beyond his body's normal limits, his mind and focus need to be peach perfect to contain that power amp and additional key overload. Why might you ask yourself? His mind need to be calm whilst containing all of that new power. Because he would explode, that's why. If a fighter has no key control and doesn't focus and doesn't keep calm when containing his overloading key, then he's a dead man. It's just that 1% who didn't think. And think Super Saiyan Blue gives the user a calm mind, where it's actually the opposite. The user needs a calm mind to access blue because of the requirement of combining an emotional Super Saiyan state with focused God Key. It's simple, that's Goku's training in a nutshell. Over the years, his key control and focus and mind calmness have become awesome, which is why he could start combining the Kaioken amp with his blue Super Saiyan form. Stamina is a little bit different to key control and focus. Of course, Goku's stamina gets smashed during this with the extra key tearing at his body and containing all of that power. That's a physical property but the key control and Kaioken amplification control is all mind focus. And this type of reckless shit can really hurt the user when they try to amp their power over their body's limits. They get delayed onset key disorder as seen in Super. 
meaning they fucked up big time. And that's their bodies messing up because it doesn't know what happened to all of the muscle fibers and nerves in scientific terms. Remember when Yajirobe slapped Goku? Yeah, just like that. Body problems. So next I'm going to compare Kaioken to Super Saiyan, and for the purposes of this video, we will use Namek Saga Goku as a perfect example. In terms of the physiological differences between Kaioken and Super Saiyan, there are a number of obvious differences. First of all, we see Goku utilizing the x20 in Dragon Ball Z, making his base power naturally 20 times stronger. But when Super Saiyan came into the equation, Super Saiyan gave Goku a 50 times multiplier. And what's funny is that Goku's body did not even look like it was going to explode, or didn't even look like it was having problems or damage from the power up. Unlike Goku's body with a Kaioken x20, or potentially, dare I say, Goku trying to use a Kaioken x50 at that time. And why is that? Well, the big difference is that Goku was using the Kaioken amp on his base form, but the Super Saiyan power was indeed not Goku's base. It was a transformation. Techniques versus transformations. Let's look at the meaning of the word transformation. A complete change in the appearance of character of something or someone, especially so that that thing or person is improved. In biology, it means transformation is also a permanent change in a cell that results when DNA comes from a different type of cell. Obviously, the Super Saiyan form is not permanent, but we know the characters can maintain that form. And furthermore, the process of changing the physical or chemical properties of a substance in order to make or produce something else. And we can apply that. So why doesn't the Kaioken fit this mold? Why do we never class the Kaioken as a transformation? It improves Goku, doesn't it? Well, yes and no. Let me explain. The Kaioken is a technique that controls all of the key throughout the body and can amp it in bursts. And the toll on the body is great. And as Ian Malcolm said, well, there it is. The technique in itself is a double-edged sword. It literally is the embodiment of give and take. Goku's base body during the early days of Kaioken, was not meant to be in the ranges of times 2, 3, 4, heck, even times 20. Think about it, it's 20 times more than Goku's normal key limits. It's been amped that much. The only reason Goku had a smidge of a chance not exploding was because he'd done a lot of physical training in the gravity room in order to keep his body strong and compensate for the Kaioken not tearing it to pieces. The Kaioken goes outside Goku's normal key box, and that's very dangerous. It's like us putting our hand in a fire in short bursts. Actually, it's just like that. We can play with fire in short bursts, moving our hand quickly through it so it doesn't get burned. But we are still literally playing with fire. Too much fire, or staying too long in that fire, and we get burned. Bingo, Kaioken. Now with Super Saiyan, with it being a transformation, everything changes. It's no longer just a power amp. Heck, it's got an awesome power amp, yes. Better than the Kaiokens, but point being, Super Saiyan is no longer Goku's base. He's no longer who he was in terms of physiology. Mentally, yes, albeit a little angrier, but physiology, he's not the base form. He's in a transformed state. Let me say that again, a transformed state, not base. And in a transformed state, scientifically, Goku's body has changed. His cells have changed. His physical and chemical properties have improved to produce something else. He's no longer restricted to his base form limitations. Goku's new Super Saiyan body has just adapted to something else. Something his base form wasn't able to do. And in the new transformed state, everything for Goku is different. Of course, we never officially see him stack the Kaioken on top of Super Saiyan in the Dragon Ball Z manga, only anime filler against Pycon, and that was in the other world where Goku's body is more durable, right? So in a nutshell, when we put Goku's base form on Namek next to Super Saiyan Goku on Namek, there is a huge biology change through the Saiyan anatomy that makes Super Saiyan Goku's limits far above Goku's regular base form. Using the Kaioken in the base form, pushing his body beyond limits of what it should be able to do, is literally like summoning the devil or the apocalypse on your body, hence why it should be used in short bursts. But with Super Saiyan, thanks to Saiyan biology advancing through the tingly back feeling, joke, I mean, Goku's rage, then the biology of Saiyans allows Goku to harness a times 50 multiplier in his new advanced body without as much trouble because his new transformed state is meant to handle those new amps. Whereas a times 20 on Goku's body on Namek was proven to be very demanding at that time and could nearly kill him if he overused it. And to think of a times 50 Kaioken on Namek in Goku's base form, Goku's body would have been like Krillin's when Frieza returned. And that's my theory on it using scientific analysis. Goku's base body is what it says on the tin. It's just a base, and it has restrictions, which is why through Z and even Super, 
Goku needs to transform to lift those limits. He needs to wield the Saiyan biology to raise the game and potential of what he can do. I feel Goku has not mastered the full Kaioken and he's only accustomed to certain levels of the amps that he uses. To think the Kaioken ends with a times 20 would be pretty silly considering there is no stated limitation on the Kaioken power amps. I'm talking about times 500, times 1000, multipliers which aren't really that big of a deal anymore in Dragon Ball Super, right? Even Super Saiyan 3 is a times 400 from base when transformed. If I were to place a bet that if Goku were to use blue and amplify the Kaioken higher than times 20 during the Tournament of Power, then that could start bringing on the key disorder yet again. And if the Kaioken is to truly be mastered, then these side effects and limits should be destroyed once and for all, which I believe Goku has not done yet beyond the blue times 20. Some fans think Goku mastered Kaioken because he wields the times 20 with no issues, but that's like saying times 20 is the maximum, and we do not know that. There's an obvious reason why Goku doesn't go over the times 20, and that's his body telling him no. So how is the technique with potentially endless limitation mastered? It's not. The times 20 is just accustomed. So there's no telling what his base form could do with the Kaioken alone, but there has to be an application Goku needs to stop at. If the Kaioken has no end, then there must be someone who could exploit that. We will now dive into other fighters in the Dragon Ball universe that could either benefit from the Kaioken more than Goku, potentially even mastering it, or if not mastering it, have it suit their physical properties and abilities more than Goku. Remember, the Kaioken is a technique invented by King Kai. The Kais and other gods in Z are known for their knowledge more than power. The Kaioken has nothing to do with Saiyans. So for a god to have this kind of knowledge of a technique, it probably was meant to be suited to someone very special and unnatural. Unless King Kai literally just developed it as an ace in the hole, which is probably likely too, as he told Goku never to go over a double. So in each of these characters coming up, I want your thoughts. And also, don't forget to mention other characters who I haven't mentioned that you think could master the Kaioken or exploit it to a never-ending Kaioken amp without the side effects. I'm not going to mention everyone, and this is where we work together. So first up on this list is Android 17 and 18. And this is one I want to bottle out right here from the start, because a lot of people think that the androids with their unlimited energy and stamina could use the Kaioken non-stop and be unstoppable. But actually, as we found out before in my other video, the androids do not have key. They have infinite energy and superior stamina, but no key whatsoever. Even with any sort of training, their key does not go up, but their energy does. For more information on the androids being bio-organic and their infinite energy, check out this video, it's awesome. But with that being said, the Kaioken technique is an amplification of one's key. Now, key creates energy, and if the androids don't have any key, then a Kaioken times a million on Android 17 or 18 would still equal zero key, because there's no key to begin with. Kind of a silly cop-out, but the androids have their own way of producing energy, and key is not that way. Unless Kaioken amplifies the type of energy androids use, but I'm not so sure. Next on this list is Piccolo, one of my favorite characters. Now Piccolo has a better physiology than Goku when it comes to the Kaioken. That's not to say Piccolo is stronger, it just means his anatomy is better for the Kaioken technique. Let's say, for instance, a theoretical Goku and Piccolo having the same base power in this example, then both having access to the Kaioken. Piccolo would be superior with it because his healing properties allow him to periodically heal any damages to his body through reckless Kaioken amps, which is great for Piccolo. Now Piccolo's stamina may indeed get shot faster by repairing himself as well, but at least he won't have to worry about losing his body in a fight. Furthermore, I think if Piccolo amps it right from the get-go and in short bursts, that's exactly how the Kaioken should be used, and mini heals here and there on Piccolo's body without going over the limit may not be that bad on his stamina. So Piccolo is a great choice, plus his key disorder may not actually happen due to his own Namekian healing properties in his cells, unlike Goku. Piccolo's own mental advantage would make him awesome for the Kaioken because his key controllability and meditation will allow him to wield higher doses of key easier than most. And with more key coming from the Kaioken technique, Piccolo should be able to nerf that side effect of the key going out of control. He shows this experience when using the special beam cannon where his key literally triples to his fingertips. Which brings me to Perfect Cell. Now this guy is a huge contender for the Kaioken and it's a darn shame he never utilized it in the Cell games against Gohan because it could have really closed the gap especially in the friggin beam struggle at the end. He should know the Kaioken having Goku's cells and techniques inside him. It would be overpowered which is probably why it wasn't used. Let's focus on cell biology. 
As strong as he was, plus Piccolo's regen to an even stronger effect, it makes Cell superior to Piccolo in every way. Maybe not in the meditation side of things, but even that's arguable, seems that he's got Piccolo's cells and cell memory to use techniques. Surely Cell must have astonishing key control. But to make matters worse for his opponents, Cell's regen and stamina levels were always shown to be super efficient, and minor wear and tear from a Kaioken would not be much effort for his body regen on damaged fibers. How strong can Cell amp the Kaioken? Well, he could potentially exploit the fuck out of it, and hit super high amp levels right until Cell's body literally explodes. And then what happens? Earth might blow up too, but Cell lives, right? Cell's body from an explosion always comes back, right? And just think of the Zenkai boosts he gets after explosion of amping his Kaioken, where he's almost at near death each time. So in essence, Cell could literally wield it to however he wants until he gets to where he needs to go, until he gets used to it, and even if he blows up from the Kaioken overload, it's a win-win for Cell because he comes back even stronger from the Zenkai boost. This is literally a broken friggin' tool, like a cheat code. So literally, one of the top picks for the Kaioken is Cell, and with him potentially living forever, the sky is the limit. Majin Buu is also another contender because let's be honest, regen yet again. But unlike Cell, he doesn't have the Saiyan cells that could benefit with Zenkai boosts, so Buu could potentially hit a high Kaioken amp, explode, then regen, and there would be no room for improvement, unless his key control increases. However, if Buu trains, then he could indeed nerf the Kaioken problem of overloading and destroying himself. Because during fights, if Buu wanted to go even higher, what's the worst that can happen? He blows up and reforms. So there's no consequence there with Buu using it. And over time, he could indeed learn to master many high levels of the Kaioken. So now, other characters that I believe would be perfect in using the Kaioken and exploiting it to its fullest would be characters that are immortal. Not like Master Roshi who is immortal in a lifespan type of way, but I'm talking about immortal as in cannot be killed through combat. Let's imagine Garlic Jr. or future Zamas. Preferably Zamas because he has that godly experience too. And with the Kaioken being a Kai technique, it's perfect. The Kaioken would literally never be able to destroy the user through an overload. It would be like Buu regenerating after an explosion, or would he even explode to begin with? It would mean that Zamas could just keep on amplifying it to the thousands, millions, and how is his body going to be destroyed? It won't. It will just maintain all of the amplified key, albeit with power overloading that much, how will Zamas even wield the key successfully? He will probably just wipe out the entire universe in the end with a never-ending Kaioken amp. The problem with infinite Kaioken is purpose. A character must have purpose to use the amplification. If there's an immortal character using the Kaioken, they should only go as high as they need to to beat the opponent. Going even further than that would just be showing off. And I don't really want to say Broly with a Kaioken, with his power rising, overflowing, to even double that, triple that. Could Broly even release all of the key in time before he explodes? Broly plus Kaioken is a time bomb waiting to happen. And if that happens, he's getting zero Zenkai from that ending. So with all that being said today, we could say immortal characters probably are the best contenders along with Perfect Cell's benefits. Who could use the Kaioken the best? But even an immortal can amplify as high as they want. Their key control is another issue. Using the key for a purpose of fighting or not being able to wield it because it's too powerful, making them destroy their surroundings is not really mastering the Kaioken, is it? And with that being said, even with all these characters, I truly believe the Kaioken cannot be mastered. Every character can master and accustom the Kaioken to a certain level for their body. But the Kaioken as a whole is infinite, and there's no mastering an infinite technique, even for an immortal, because they could just keep exploring the amps for an eternity. Infinite means infinite. There is no end. And that's it for the Kaioken. I really hope you enjoyed this video, guys. And I really hope it brought a lot of good memories back about the Kaioken. How awesome it was when it was introduced in Dragon Ball Z. I hate old techniques and transformations becoming obsolete, but that's just the way it goes in Dragon Ball. However, even with new material entering all the time, it will never take away from how awesome certain things were at certain points in the show. The Kaioken was one of those moments. It was badass when it came out. And I still think it's badass now. One of the most interesting, popular, and entertaining techniques in Dragon Ball history. See you all later.